which in many other universities in the world have requirement to publish papers in international journals. Okay. By the way, uh, what is the requirement that uh, some other universities, some people are stating uh, from other places? I think it is the same, almost the same. Minimum one journal paper you have to publish for uh, uh, your PhD. And being a tenure faculty, one has to publish paper for promotion or fetching funds uh, or grants from the potential agencies. As we said that we need promotion, uh, we need to become uh, associate professor or we need to become a full professor. Then we must show our uh, capability by publishing papers in top journals. Then we can get, uh, get the promotion, otherwise we cannot be promoted to uh, or we cannot be elevated to higher ranks. And thirdly, we have to fetch funds. For example, you write a proposal and you send to the agency. So, how can they trust you? They, they trust you by seeing your record of publications that you have published a lot of good journal papers or good transaction papers or good conference papers. Then they will trust you. This person is trustworthy and he is applying for the fund. Then, uh, you know, he can, he has a background of uh, sound research. So, they uh, normally, uh, they see this thing also. And when you are transiting to any, any other job, then it is also very important. For example, if you want to uh, join a uh, very good university or very good institution or uh, uh, research center, then they see the track of your research and how many publications do you have, this kind of stuff. So, it is very important for promotion or elevation of your rank and uh, uh, getting fund and uh, from the different agencies. So, either you are working in uh, academics or industrial writing is very important thing or publishing. Even you are not publishing uh, because you are working in the classified uh, maybe organization where you cannot submit your results. But in the classified organization, but you have to write technical reports for your own repository. You cannot just, uh, if you are not publishing papers in the IT quality transactions or outside journals because your work is classified, but you have to write something. So, you must have good writing skills. Because being researchers, we should have very good communication skills, either it is verbal or non-verbal. Otherwise, we cannot become good researcher. Like I give you example of uh, a presentation which was delivered by uh, the uh, one uh, Microsoft director in China. So, he asked a question to the attendees that, what is the most important thing a researcher should possess? Some people say that he should be a very good mathematician, he should be a very good programmer. Some people say he should uh, have very good strong background in many things and he should know the field. He says the forefront thing I tell you is that the most important thing a researcher should possess is the communication skills, either verbal or non-verbal. It is very, very important. If you are not very good in research, but you have very good communication skills, then you will be become famous. So, communication skills are very important and the writing is also the one of the, you know, bridges to connect the people with each other. So, it is very important to write papers and to uh, improve your uh, writing skills. And there is very good saying, Fritz uh, Schaeffer, that if it is not published, it does not exist. This is true. You have some idea, you did not publish, you say that I have this idea, I have this idea. After, after some uh, two years, somebody published that thing in a better manner, then how can you claim that I gave this idea? What is the proof? So, if it is not published, it does not exist. So, you have to publish, then it will exist, because it exists. Existence of uh, literature is very available. I have so many ideas, but if I am not publishing the ideas, then what is the benefit of my ideas? Because I am not disseminating my knowledge, I am not sharing my knowledge with the people and uh, I am not giving some theory. So, what is the benefit of that thing? I am just keeping my ideas in my mind. So, it is very important to publish, otherwise it does not exist. Now, we see that uh, this was the perspective of uh, uh, being an author. Now, we see why editors, what editors have perspective from our publications like editors of the journal or EICs, editor in chiefs. Actually, they want paper that will increase the read readability and citations, especially for the survey papers, you know. We will discuss sur what is survey paper, we will see uh, one slide on that. They want that uh, papers should be written by good top people, so that, you know, uh, it will catch the attention of the same uh, people in the, uh, in the field. For example, biometrics, who is the uh, top researchers in biometrics, an Asian from USA, Michigan State University. If he writes a paper, its papers are getting a lot of citations and everywhere, you know, he is publishing paper in transactions, FAMI or Elsevier, Swinger, many top journals of the world. It is getting a lot of, you know, citations. So, for example, being an editor, I also like to invite him to write paper in, in my journal because if he will write my paper uh, in my journal, then it will increase the citation factor of my journal. It will go up and it will, you know, improve the readability of the journal. So, we need uh, uh, pap uh, papers 
papers which are written by top people called seminal paper uh, influential paper you can say seminal means influential papers that are high quality technically sound and rigorous in their analysis raise the profile of the journal of course every editor wants to raise the profile of a journal because if uh, it's a good journal then its sub subscription level will increase and you know it will be distribution will be more and people will uh, good people will write paper in that and impact factor will be high do you have idea of impact factor i say impact factor some people i think four or five i know that uh, they are so which means they have the idea but maybe in future uh, my lecture we will discuss about these kind of things that what is sci what is impact factors and how to publish in uh, that kind of journals and how do we find impact factor and how to see this kind of stuff like uh, web of science we will explore the things but we are not going in the detail because that that is a third step of our uh, you know endeavor and papers that are about emerging technologies seminal papers La and lastly in my lecture in april i also discuss about the uh, you know uh, emerging technologies normally uh, it is recommended for the starters or for the new phd or master student that uh, uh, try to do uh, research in emerging areas why because it's an emerging area it's a new, a new opportunity to write many papers because it has not been uh, saturated because some uh, areas which have been saturated and there are so many people are working in that area and writing a lot of papers so you can you have very difficulty you know uh, uh, to write paper and when the areas are emerging and new areas are coming if you write paper then your paper uh, you know can easily be accepted by the journal so normally it has been practiced like i give you the example of uh, some people it's uh, a little bit easier to write paper in uh, maybe ad hoc networks man net people are working in that but it will be a little bit difficult to write a paper in pattern recognition kind of stuff so because the reason is that it has been saturated and many people are, have been you know working in that area for last 20 or 30 years or maybe last decades but if you explore a new area which is emerging then you will have uh, you know more strength to write more papers and you uh, if you want to judge it you can go through the profile of the people websites of the uh, new researchers you can see if they are working in emerging area they are uh, having a lot of papers papers and special issues that somehow raise the subscription levels normally uh, the many journals have special issues and uh, editors normally want that uh, uh, there should be some kind of special issues in their journal so that it could improve their uh, subscription level and of course it will also imp uh, improve the readability of the you know uh, Uh, journal because it, uh, special issue is very focused issue for example i do special issue on biometrics i do special issue in uh, uh, chaotic cryptography so this kind of thing but journal is journal g e n e r a l it can accept papers in maybe computer science it can accept paper in uh, sensor networks it can accept paper in uh, many other fields related fields but uh, when uh, it is special issue for a specific subject biometrics then there all there will be only papers on the biometric topic so uh, editors are also you know in search of this kind of special issues also and it will of course uh, improve the subscription level of the journal now what will be the goal of a research publication i ask you this question that what will you want me what will be the goal only increment or explore new or give new things new and any other actually this is the same thing this is you can say the generalized uh, specialized form of that first slide now we see the thing to conduct academic and professional training from the paper writing being an student i am telling you this point being an student we have to train ourselves by writing papers because we are going to become the you know leaders in the future many people who are sitting here or many people who were sitting in the this kind of presentation 20 years back and they are the fellow of the ipoli or fellow of the you know acm or many top they were also student but when they started writing papers when they were student they learn how to write paper but later on they become expert in that area so being a student we have to conduct academic and professional training this is very important thing being a student okay if if you have any questions uh, you can uh, raise uh, your question so that we can solve that uh, uh, theory and to add contribution to the current uh, existing knowledge this is the same thing we, because we want to give contribution because we have knowledge and somebody has proposed something 
then we want to give our own thoughts, our own you know uh, experiments that what we have done, and it's a contribution. Maybe sometimes you get nothing for your contribution. Sometimes uh, it's uh, zero contribution, but sometimes you get a lot for that. And to make recognition in your field, like before we talk, that you want to recognize yourself. It's very important. It's a goal of publication because I write paper. I want to recognize myself also. It's one of the goals. It's not only the goal that I want to recognize myself. Of course, I have family also. I have to support my family. I have other things also. I have to uh, give uh, additional knowledge in the, uh, to the community. 